Welcome to September's LECO Challenge. Today's problem is longest turbulent subarray. Given an integer array, return the length of the maximum size of the turbulent subarray. Now, a subarray is turbulent if the comparison sign flips between each adjacent pair of elements in the subarray, meaning basically if we have an, uh, an integer, the number preceding it and the number coming after it both need to be greater than this number or they both need to be less. So here with this example, we can see that 9 and 4, I suppose, would be considered a turbulent array. But once we get here, 9, 4, 2 is not because it decreases and then it decreases again. What we want is this example. We want both adjacent numbers to be increasing or decreasing. So here we can see both 4 and 10 are greater than 2. So this would be considered turbulent. And what we can do is... Uh, see how far we can take this subarray here. Recall that subarrays are have to be next to each other. So this would be the largest subarray. Once we get to 8, 8, this doesn't count. So we want to implement a sliding window technique for sure. What we'll do is say that we had this example. We'll have a left and right pointer starting at the beginning. And we'll first increase our right pointer just by 1. And we're going to check our condition are the adjacent numbers greater, both greater or both less? So here we can see they're not both greater. Uh, one's less and one's greater. So this doesn't count. And we'll just calculate what the maximum turbulent cell array is at this point, which is going to be R minus L plus 1. So that's going to be 2. And then we're going to increase our L pointer all the way to the R pointer. And then move our R pointer 1 ahead. Now we'll continue with the algorithm. Here we see both sides are greater, so we'll increase our r. We see both numbers are less, so we increase our r. Here we see both numbers are greater, so we increase our r. But here we, our condition ends, right? So again, what we'll do is calculate our length here. r minus l plus 1 is going to be 5. Then move our l pointer all the way up to where the left pointer is. And then just continue this algorithm up until we reach, reach the end here. Now, the tricky thing here is considering these repeating numbers, but I'll get to that. What we'll do is first start with the left and right pointer. We'll also have our output as well as the, the size of the array. So both of these start with 0. The output also is 0. And n is going to be length of array, right? All right, so while l is no, the main thing that counts actually is the right pointer, right? So as long as r is less than n, we're going to continue this. But one thing to note is I'm going to be checking the numbers coming after and before. So that means this R pointer actually needs to be less than 1, uh, less than n minus 1 like this. It can't ever reach the end here. Uh, so that's going to be a condition we need to consider. Now, while R is less than n minus 1, and let's check to see if this condition holds, uh, we'll have the number coming before it is greater and the number coming after is greater or the opposite. So when this happens, we're going to just increase our 1. And that's really it. Now let's calculate our output. We'll say output equals the max of output and r minus l plus 1, right? Now make sure to get our left pointer and move it all the way up ahead to where the right pointer is. And finally, we need to increase our right pointer 1 again. And we turn our output after this. Now this would solve uh, like this here would probably get solved. But unfortunately, like these repeating 8 numbers is going to be a problem here. So what we're going to have to do is actually make sure our left pointer also follows ahead uh, to the point at which we don't see any repeats. So we'll say while, uh, make sure that L is less than R here, and uh, we're going to look ahead, right? So while uh, this is, mm, well, if it's equal to the one coming after it, uh, we're going to have to move our left pointer ahead by one. Now, the neat thing about this is uh, we can start at 0. And in the beginning here, we do have an edge case of, like, say we had 
some number like 99. If we had 99, the problem with this is we would never enter here because n is going to be 2. And now r, if we started at 0, or I'm sorry, if we started r at 1 like this, then it would never enter this loop, right? So we have to kind of take care of that by uh, this algorithm here, this part. But otherwise, this should work. So let's see. OK, um, that did not work. Let's see what went wrong here. Plus one or minus one. So my guess is I must have, ah, uh, yes, I forgot to change this. Okay. There we go. So let's go ahead and submit that. Well, I guess there's some edge cases, right? We forgot about the edge cases. Okay, so if the length of n is 1, then we just return 1. I am making all sorts of mistakes today. Okay, accepted. So this is going to be O of n time complexity because it's a sliding window and we use constant space. We don't use any extra space. Yeah, so one of the things I should mention is I did look at some of the other solutions after I solved this and none of them look like my solution. So I don't know what that means, whether that means my solution sucks or it's brilliant, I have no idea. The other solutions are, are still variations of this, but um, you know I'm gonna stick with mine because it seems to work and I understand it while the others I kind of had some trouble understanding a little bit how, how that flipping and some of the DP solutions worked. So we'll stick with this. All right, thanks for watching my channel. Remember, do not trust me. I know nothing.